Hello, everyone. My name is Jinghe, software engineer in the big data orchestration team at Netflix. My team owns the uh, big data related job orchestrator and the workflow orchestrator. All the big data platform users at Netflix use our services to do their jo uh, daily jobs, like uh, uh, running the Spark jobs, Trino jobs, machine learning workflows, and so on. Today, I'm going to talk about our workflow orchestrator for large scale data pipelines. We will talk about how we build this scalable system with conductor. If you have any questions during the talk, feel free to raise your hand or post it in the chat. Okay. Netflix is a data driven company. Many decisions at Netflix are driven entirely by data insights from the color using the landing page to upcoming original content. Data scientists, engineers, and even content producers all run their data pipelines to get the insights they need. So we need to support a wide variety of use cases. Users use our scheduler to automate their normal ETL pipelines, like train their machine learning models, run their Metaflow pipelines. Here, Metaflow is a another open source machine learning framework by Netflix, uh, which is seamlessly integrated with our scheduler and also run A-B testing. Some services at, at Netflix even use our scheduler to periodically run jobs. So this B2B scheduler is our homemade workflow orchestrator at Netflix. It provides workflows as a service to thousands of Netflix internal users. It is scalable and reliable, including multiple components. For example, the uh, workflow engine, uh, the UI portal, and the alerting service, and the error classi classification service, and so on. And uh, um, so we provide also multiple level abstraction, abstraction layers there, like a DSL, uh, the uh, notebook templates and so on to simplify the <coughs> uh, the user uh, simplify the user work and make the, uh, the usability better it satisfies all the needs of our users including engineers and non engineers too like uh, content producers here we try to abstract uh, the common functions and the uh, reusable patterns from all use cases and uh, add them to the scheduler in a loosely coupled way. For example, like Spark or Trino jobs, we made templates for, so users can simply just uh, set a few parameters, say put a SQL query, and then can run their query uh, without worry about those backend uh, or compute class at all. Uh, for advanced users, they can also pack their business logic in a notebook or a Docker image, and then B2B scheduler will run it. Um, also, triggering functions are uh, very important for the data uh, related workflows. Users can schedule the workflow uh, based on time, like uh, providing a cron expression to run the job or workflow daily, hourly, or uh, based on the data sync load. Say, when the uh, table is ready, then run this ETL pipeline to process the data and so on. Plus that we need the end-to-end -end security because security is another uh, very important feature to protect users and uh, our data the warehouse as well. Here I use the DSL uh, as an example. Uh, we found that a human readable DSL is very helpful and uh, plays an important role to support the uh, different use cases. So at Netflix, user can write their workflow uh, definition using uh, like a multiple YAM, uh, like a DSLs like a YAML or Python or Java. The YAML DSL is actually the most popular one uh, due to its simplicity and uh, easy to understand for engineer and the non engineer. Uh, here is an example the, in the right side. The, this workflow consists of uh, two jobs. Uh, job one runs a Spark SQL query, and job two runs a notebook. For the job one, users just need to put a, their uh, SQL query in the script uh, as an inline uh, query. And then uh, for the job two, user put their uh, notebook in the S3 pass. And uh, so 
this workflow is scheduled to run every day at midnight in the Pacific time zone. And the users are not exposed to the internals of executing a particular job. They do not need to worry about how to communicate or set up to one of the uh, computer clusters. All they have to do is pick the uh, job type they want, like a notebook, Spark, Trino, whatever, uh, and then provide the right parameters. If there's a bug fix or enhancement for those job types, uh, we can apply it to all the jobs immediately. So what's the challenge? Here, the challenge for the uh, previous generation system is mainly related to the scale. So uh, here is our current scale. You can see there are like uh, quite a, a high growth rate. And then we run like uh, tens of thousands of workflows every day and uh, which uh, consists of uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of jobs actually. Um, and uh, uh, also those jobs at a peak moment, for example, midnight, there are all, like thousands are scheduled around the, same, the exact same second. And so the traffic is quite spiky. Uh, 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 the spike is high, the growth rate is also high and uh, the load is uneven. Um, so you can see it. Actually, in the recent year, it will kind of uh, reach the capacity limit. But before that happens, we have uh, started to build our next generation scalable workflow scheduler with a conductor. Uh, why we choose conductor? Uh, it's mainly because it's horizontal scalability. There's no single point of failure as well. Uh, during the investigation, we found conductor is quite flexible and uh, easy to extend. Uh, plus, it's mature and have a great open source uh, community to support it and uh, solve issues. So uh, we started this project more than two years ago. We have evaluated other available orchestration engines as well. Similar to our previous generation scheduler, uh, Airflow and the Dexter do not scale well. They cannot scale out. Uh, cadence or temporal is in its very early stage at that time. So we didn't consider that. And Alka is designed for a specific use case, not, not flexible. So eventually we decided to use a conductor. Um, but we use conductor in a quite different way. Uh, it's a, it's a, just a DAG engine library in our service. There's a no standalone conductor cluster. We also uh, manage our own workflow definitions and the other metadata outside of conductor because uh, we have a different data model and different features and uh, uh, plus that uh, uh, we need to add lots of uh, other information to our data models, for example, like security features and so on. Um, so also we have our own version control and uh, so we store all of the information in the outside of conducting our own DB and including like security, everything. And then uh, we just use a workflow executor directly to run a workflow instance and bypass the conduct API layer to improve the performance. So uh, when we run a workflow, so our scheduler first loads the workflow definition from its own metadata store and it translates it at runtime into a conduct workflow definition and then run it as an inline workflow. So we reuse the conduct workflow level state machine but we also add our own task uh, level state machine when we implement conduct task. Uh, our task will also keep syncing the data back to the, our own DB. Um, one reason why we go with this approach is because uh, microservice orchestrator did not exactly align with the data workflow orchestrator. Um, for scaling, we are not just talking about how many workflows we can run. Uh, we also care how large a workflow we can run. Uh, in data domain, it's common to have a workflow with tens of thousands of for each iterations to backfill the data or train a machine learning model. So we have to scale out to support those use cases too. Um, also, data sync loads are different here. They just mean the readiness of the data. And uh, it does not always trigger a workflow to run. We need to figure out uh, work, uh, the workflows depending on those data to be able to trigger those workflows. Also, uh, so one 
data single load might trigger like a thousand workflows to run, right? Because those workflows might subscribe to listen to that upstream table. Also, all the single loads matters too. Uh, you can imagine the backfield jobs when they run it, they need to uh, check if the old data is ready, right? So for the job, they can have a gating uh, single load check where it check if the date of that data or the partition of the data in DB is actually ready, in the data warehouse is ready. Uh, plus that the main use case of our service is not a software engineer. They are data scientists, machine learning engineer, or even content producers. So we have two other of those abstraction layers to improve the usability. So, and, but that's cause like the data model of our own is quite uh, different from the uh, Canada one. Um, also, our users don't own a microservice. They just own their own business logic. And uh, the business logic can be written in a notebook uh, or packed in a doc image. And the uh, B2B scheduler is responsible to run their business logic from end to end. Um, there are also different expectations from uh, like our users about how job are retrieved, uh, back off and the timeout. Uh, here, arrows might be have different types. And uh, uh, however, Conduct has the right extension points to allow us to support those behaviors. Here is a, a really high level architecture uh, diagram. Our users use the UI or scheduler client CLI to interact with the scheduler API over the gateway, which provides a public interface abstraction and hide the internal details. The gateway is also very helpful uh, while dealing with API instance. For example, we can shut down the API gateway to disable the APIs, but still keep the workflow engine running to still run the workflow, right? So it's like a partial down. Um, this greatly reduces the impact of the instance. The workflow engine is the core, uh, where the conductor plays a really uh, important role here as a DAG engine. Um, the core manages the workflow versioning, the state of workflow execution, um, and also it has uh, rich features like uh, manage a storage, storage layer, the API, and the run strategy. Those things are quite uh, associated with the data related thing. Um, our and also our scheduler supports scheduling with uh, triggering components like uh, event-based triggering or time-based triggering. And uh, uh, either runs user busy logic in a Docker container over the execution engine, uh, which can be Kubernetes or here at Netflix is uh, 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 Titus. The core is loosely coupled with down, uh, downstream services over this uh, uh, pub sub event stream. So every state change or everything happen, the scheduler will send the event to this uh, stream and then the downstream services subscribe to those streams will be able to react according like alerting or other things. Plus that we have a error classification service which uh, monitor all the job executions and then based on the uh, rule engine it has to tell if this job is a user job, a user a failure is a user failure or it's other failure or and so on. And then it can uh, give the insights or hints to the scheduler to decide if restart this or not restart it. Okay, um, we also made multiple extensions. Uh, one is to implement the Kotos DB persistent layer. Kotos DB is a distributed SQL database and provide transaction support. It also offer multi-region support and uh, change data capture features and, as well. Uh, we are quite happy with it in terms of performance. Also, uh, we made uh, some other smaller uh, changes uh, or extension too. We had different, for example, different retry policies for different error types, like user error or platform errors. Uh, user error means that business logic causes the failure. Platform error means like uh, the computer engine or other platform has the trouble, like uh, the spark cluster is rotating or down or something like that. So we kind of need to uh, categorize them into different uh, different way and then treat them differently. Uh, also, even have different retry policy as well. And uh, plus that we extend the conduct tasks to add features for our own use case, like parameter evaluation and uh, uh, single checking and so on. Um, thank you. That's it. Uh, any questions? All right, thank you, June. 
uh, for that wonderful presentation, uh, highlighting the flexibility of Conductor and how you've used the Conductor execution engine to build on top of it uh, into a workflow scheduler. Uh, while we're waiting for questions, uh, I'll ask the same question that I asked Flavio. Uh, can you speak to the scale at which uh, you run workflows and like how many workflows do you run, like how many different types of workflows you run? Uh, can you give us uh, an idea about that? Sure. Um, so because we abstracted it out, so uh, I can talk in a high level, like uh, uh, so uh, we run like uh, uh, tens of thousands of workflow instances per day and uh, which uh, uh, will eventually uh, run about like uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs, either like Spark query job or whatever, uh, and those jobs per day. And uh, the, the, high, the, the, so the traffic is uneven. So um, in the midnight, we may schedule uh, thousands of workflows to run at the same second. And uh, um, so that's like a peak uh, spike, uh, traffic rate. And for the number of job types, we, from a uh, conductor perspective, it's just one job type, right? Uh, we implement the interface of conduct a system task. And uh, but, uh, from our user perspective, they actually can run like uh, tens of different types of jobs, like a notebook job, or like titles job, or sorry, uh, which is a Docker container and uh, some uh, Spark job, Trino job, and the move data job, and so on. Those jobs are quite flexible, uh, and the user can even develop their own template and ship it to us as well. And, uh, but on the underlying, we have a layer to be able to feed those job templates into the con uh, conductor framework so that we don't need to keep adding more and more those uh, uh, conductor tasks. So we have like one general task, which is written in Java, and then other users can ship their template in other language like a notebook or other thing. Then we can uh, uh, accommodate them because the, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, if you have a question in the chat from Boni, uh, he asks, will some of the extensions that you added make its way into the OSS? Oh, that's, that's a good idea. That uh, everyone's <laughs> waiting to hear. <laughs> that's something we are considering, uh, but no uh, date yet. I think we're all excited for you to make those contributions back. That would be amazing. Yeah, we definitely, yeah, considering that. Right. Uh, any more questions? Right. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we have for you, June. Uh, thank you once again for the presentation and for the, the questions. Thank you. Uh,